Hello. I hope everyone is having a great time during the holidays and New Year's. I've been playing a lot of Genshin Impact and Cyberpunk. Today, I have the SP111, a split softball keyboard that you can push together to form a regular keyboard. Southpaws are my favorite keyboard for productivity, so I'm glad to be seeing more southpaws in interest checks and group buys. This keyboard is definitely the most unique and biggest keyboard I've owned so far. The keyboard was supposed to come in black, e-white, and navy, but the navy actually came out more like teal from the factory. I have the black one here, and it comes with a brass plate. It's a sandwich mount board, and you can see the plate creating a nice accent color around the case. You also get some rubber bump-ons for the bottom of the case, and a USB-C to USB-C cable to connect the two halves. The PCB doesn't actually come in the box, it's in a separate bubble wrap. The black is, well, black, so not much to say here other than there's no flaws in the anodization. This thing is really heavy. Unbuilt, the left side is about 3.2 pounds and the right side is about 2.8 pounds for a total of about 6 pounds. Each half is secured by 6 screws on the bottom and the plate has some extra mounting points to help you secure the plate between the case. The stock plate does not support a mirror numpad layout so the two U keys are on the right side of the numpad. However, it is supported on the PCB and the plate files were released so I bought a separate carbon fiber plate with a mirror numpad support since that's what I have on my EXT65. Here's a rough sound test of the sound differences between these two materials. I'm going to be building this keyboard with Boba U4 silent tactile switches with the clear tops and 62 gram springs. I lubed the springs with Victory Knox multi tool oil, but I'm leaving the rest of the switch stock. As for the stabilizers, I have Duroc V1s from Novel Keys, lube with 205G0 on the housing, and dielectric grease on the wires. Lastly, I'll be mounting a GMK Metropolis on this keyboard. This keyboard supports various bottom row layouts, so I thought it would be a pain to figure out where the switches would need to go, but the PCB has labels to show you where to put the switch to get your desired key sizes, and I really appreciate that.
This keyboard is definitely not for you if you're looking for a smaller form factor keyboard for a more minimal look. The blockers create various sections around the keyboard, preventing it from looking too condensed, which is the reason why I don't like 96 key layouts. And the southpaw layout allows for more mouse room on the right, while retaining numpad for easy number inputs. There are four extra keys above the numpad, which I program various media keys on, and it's a nice spot for artisans. These ones here are the ones by S-Craft Studio. The SP111 does support 3mm LED indicators, but I didn't have any on hand when I was building, but that's fine because I can always add them in later. This keyboard does support VIA, but you have to make and flash the VIA firmware yourself, which you can grab from QMK. The default VIA firmware has some bugs. The UI of the keyboard doesn't match the actual PCB. For example, even though in VIA the backspace key is set to backspace, the actual key registered is delete. So to fix that, set the layout to split backspace, then change the delete key to backspace. There may be issues with the numpad as well, but I'm using the mirror numpad layout so I can't speak for the standard numpad. For the mirror numpad, I set all of the 2U keys to be split and assign the keys as such. Even though it's a split keyboard, I actually keep the two halves together most of the time, but I do appreciate the flexibility to change things up whenever I feel like it. Since you can push the two halves together to form a regular keyboard, you can see the switches and plate on these sides of the two halves when they're apart. This keyboard is a whole nother beast in my collection, and I love it. My plan is to have this be my productivity keyboard at home and have the EXT65 in the office whenever people start going back to the office. Or the other way around, I'm not really sure yet. Extras will be coming out, so keep an eye out on the Key Company Discord server and email list if you're interested in picking up one. Aftermarket Foam will also be available on stupidfish.design whenever they're ready. That's it for me today. Please like the video if you found it interesting and subscribe to stay updated on my future content. Until next time.